Hi, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com and today this video is uh, with this title which is uh, Photography is not for poor people and uh, Portrait of an Idiot, why this? Well, basically because when I published my video about the Alpha 7 Mark II a guy in Spanish, but that kind of comment we hear them in Spanish, in English, in French, in any language, honestly and in many places, not just on my YouTube channel, on social networks in general. He says, for video, I think it's uh, really uh, back, it's not uh, up to date, and uh, compared to the competition, it doesn't record in 10 bits, it doesn't have 422, I don't think it's, uh, it's not a joke, I recommend the Alpha 7 Mark IV. Up to this, well, actually, he didn't watch the video, because the video I said that Yes, uh, that camera, I would not use it nowadays for video because uh, people need uh, yeah, more advanced features. But for photography, I recommended it if you have a low, uh, limited budget. But the big problem is not that. The big problem is the last sentence. Photography is not for poor people. So there are two ways of looking at it. One is the, the insulting way he says it, and in a way that he... Yeah, uh, looks over uh, the shoulder uh, to, of, of people who don't have much money. And I think uh, when he says that, he just portrayed himself as an idiot. But still, I think we uh, could speak about uh, the big uh, question. Do you need to have a lot of money to practice photography? Uh, yeah, to have fun uh, or maybe to make money with photography. Do you need to be rich or uh, do uh, poor people can make pictures with any camera they can afford. So let's start. Obviously we see that kind of comment about on every social networks and people who do that kind of comment they often do it uh, to uh, feel better, to feel superior to others and when you analyze the work they do very often they're not people who've been making pictures for many years. They very often uh, arrived recently uh, to photography and they feel that uh, your gear is the key to success. They feel that uh, they should show off with their gear and uh, feel superior thanks to the camera they have. Yeah, I think uh, it's good to be happy about the gear you have. Uh, even if it's really expensive, you have it, it's yours, you paid for it. It's normal you're happy about it, that's fine. The problem is when uh, they start to show off with their gear and uh, yeah, uh, insulting others or uh, lacking respect towards others who don't have that kind of gear and have a more modest gear. And they also prove that they are completely ignorant of the world situation. We have a world with uh, several speeds. Uh, yeah, first world, second world, third world, although uh, they have many different words uh, to, to call it. If we look in countries uh, with... Uh, yeah, no, um, not, not that uh, good economy. Well, doesn't mean they're not happy there first. Uh, we check there and we see that to kind of photographers, some people do have a lot of money and they do have great uh, latest, uh, more advanced gear. But there are many, many, many with really basic cameras. Very often uh, cameras uh, that in Europe or in the US or in the first world, they are called uh, like, uh, yeah, basic camera, beginner's camera. And still, they work with them, they make great pictures, uh, nothing to, uh, yeah, to envy other uh, camera, uh, or other pictures we see uh, out of uh, better cameras. And uh, very often they work with them, they make a living out of it. And uh, yes, uh, they work with it, no problem. So, are they ignorant about this situation that you can still make uh, your work and live out of it with basic camera? or simply they know about it, but they feel the need to insult them. When people do this, they just make a self-portrait of an idiot, basically, okay? So I think uh, this is something that is a big nightmare on social networks, but now we can speak about the big, big question, the one, the, the one that is really useful to this video. So do we need a lot of money to uh, enjoy photography? Well, if we speak about enjoy, I speak about amateur, not professional. Obviously, you can have any camera 
have fun, enjoy making photography. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's great. You can have an entry level camera, top of the range camera, any camera you want and enjoy it. Obviously, if you can afford the top, you have the money, you want it, you, uh, yeah, you feel like you deserve the best camera, why not? Uh, you will not carry your money in your coffin to the cemetery, okay? So enjoy it, no problem. But if you cannot afford to have the highest gear, the highest uh, yeah, features, all this, no problem. You can make great pictures with absolutely any camera. I am not saying you can make any picture with any camera. Obviously, if you want to make underwater photography and your camera cannot go underwater, yeah, you cannot make these pictures, obviously, okay? But otherwise, yeah, you can enjoy photography with absolutely any camera. You don't need to spend a fortune to have fun. You can do it with any camera. Now, we know, don't speak about enjoying, although you can enjoy your work, but we speak about professional. It means, uh, it doesn't mean you're a better photographer, it means you charge for your work. And when you charge for your work, you have some obligation like uh, having gear. You need to bring some guarantee, not guarantee of making great pictures, guarantee that you put all, what, all the gear that was needed to uh, try to get the best results. What does this mean? Well, if you make a wedding a reportage and you have only one camera, it falls on the floor, it breaks, you cannot carry on working. So you failed your obligation. You should have two cameras, several lenses. If anything fails, you can carry on working and still give a result to your clients. It doesn't mean the pictures are nice, doesn't mean the pictures are beautiful, it means you deliver pictures because you were contracted for that, okay? So, of course, if you want to be a professional, it is more expensive. Why? Because you need at least two of everything. Not everything, but the main things, okay? So it means that very often, uh, People don't realize that, they just have a one good camera and they don't have anything else and that's a problem. So it's always better to have two entry-level camera than just one high-level camera because if that high-level fails or falls on the floor, you're done, you cannot do the work. So yes, it's more expensive, but you can still get entry-level gear to work as long as you have uh, several things that are double in case anything goes wrong. But there's also another thing is your personal image. Basically, is how do you appear to your clients with the gear you have? What does, what does he think about you? Well, it all depends on where you are and uh, what kind of professional uh, are in the area. If every professional in your area are using entry-level cameras, no problem, you can do the same. No one will be surprised or disappointed or look at you like this because next photographer is using the same gear, so no problem. But what happens if you are in a country or an area or a kind of clients that only see photographers with uh, the highest gear, the latest and the best featured and everything? Well, obviously they will look at you like, you're no good. They, maybe <laughs> you do the same pictures and they are good or even better, but still they won't look at them. They will look at you and your camera. And in this situation, obviously, you will have to spend more money. It sounds stupid. It's the same as if a lawyer needs a better car, otherwise his client don't believe he's a, he's a good lawyer. Or uh, you need a uh, yeah, brand uh, clothes, otherwise people feel that you're not good enough for them. That's stupid, but this is the way society goes. So if you are some in, in some places where they will ask for the gear you use, like uh, some, uh, yeah, advertising uh, agencies or yeah some clients they will look at what car, what gear do you use well i've got an entry level camera they will not take you serious that's stupid but that's the way it is so in this situation yes it's expensive to be a professional because you need to have at least the same gear as your neighbor okay so that's sad but that's the way it is when you're going to pick a camera it's really important to make a big difference between photography and videography if you look at photography, honestly, in the past 10 years, image quality has not bettered. I don't speak about the resolution, I speak about image quality. Yeah, in high lights a bit better, in low light a bit better, but more or less we're still doing the same, getting the same results, no different. So I would say any camera will be fine, no problem with photography. 
When we speak about videography, that's a big problem. Because I think photography is now matured. Uh, it could better a bit more, but still, we're getting to a, a yeah, mature situation. With videography, no. Videography, not that long ago, we were with HD, Full HD, 4K, now 6K, 8K. We don't know we, where we're going. So that's a big problem because if you want to have a really good quality video, you probably have to spend a lot of money on gear for video. Obviously, if we speak about your uh, vacation souvenir, anything is fine. As long as you can see it on your uh, TV at home, that's fine. But if you want to sell your content, if you want to create content for clients, if you want to uh, have a mini series on Netflix, obviously the cost is a lot higher. Uh, you need something that is far, far, far better. It means far, far, far more expensive. And that's sad, but that's the way it is. It's true that there are some people that do video with basic gear and then they can interpolate to 4K or better the image in post-production, all this, but obviously, let's be honest, uh, the more advanced is your uh, camera for video side, the more flexible and easy it's going to be in post-production to create the content, okay? That's the truth, okay? So, if we speak about videography, yes, uh, the more recent the camera, the more advanced the features, the easier and better for you. For photography, no problem. I know some people are going to say, yeah, but Eric, uh, next month is the Olympic, Olympic Games and uh, you need a fast camera and great autofocus to make the right pictures or less. Look at this video I published last year, I think, about the Olympic Games of Montreal in Quebec in 1976. And nothing to speak about. Have a look at it. So let's carry on. There is a sentence I really love it's called, uh, if you cannot uh, fight your enemy, uh, unify with him, okay? I like this. If your camera is really limited, well, a feature that are really uh, limited features, you can still use them within these limits. Let's say you're at a wedding and you have uh, the bride and the groom that are uh, dancing the vals and you cannot put your ISO really high because it will be so noisy that it will look like a pizza. So, well, you don't put higher ISO, you drop the speed and you start panning and you follow the couple. So they will be sharp and all the, the guests will be uh, moved, okay? Because you're doing a panning. And some people will look at the picture and will think, whoa, that's really original, look at this. You see them, there. the couple is uh, isolated you see there are some guests, but you don't see who they are, all this. They're really like dreaming their wedding, they're together, like uh, surrounded by people, but they're alone, okay? And th that's really what it is, the vows. Uh, they speak to each other, they're close to each other, they forget about the rest. And you see that on these pictures. And you would never guess it was made on purpose because the camera could not do better. So you can learn how to have your own style within the limit of your camera. Or let's say you have a camera and uh, it's a disaster with colors, color balance is a disaster, all this, and you end up doing only black and white pictures. And some people will think, oh, he's a great black and white photographer. He will not tell you that he started to do black and white photography because his camera was a disaster with colors. I've got a friend who is colorblind and uh, yeah, he can make pictures in color, but what he really loves is black and white photography. He is a great black and white photographer. And most people don't know is uh, colorblind. But still, he could do things within his limits. So if you cannot afford the best camera or a camera with uh, more advanced features, you can still be really creative, do incredible things with a limited camera. Don't forget this. Let's speak about money. Well, if we speak about poverty, we speak about money. Although some, some people could have a poor mentality, but we're speaking about money. It's important that when you're going to uh, manage your uh, photography budget, you spend the money wisely. Most people think just about the camera, but there are more things that could help uh, have your uh, camera limit uh, a lot further, push them further. Sometimes it's simple. A flash with a softbox gives a different look to your pictures, tripod, 
maybe some lenses. Very often people think lenses need to be uh, the sharpest one, but very often the sharpest one are the most expensive. And uh, you could perfectly use uh, lenses that are not perfect, that have some uh, defects you do see, that are not, uh, not sharp or they have uh, chromatic aberration or strange things. But as I said before, you can uh, unite to your enemy and make it your style. So you save a lot of money on lenses. But there is one part that in 2024 or even 2023 before you cannot uh, forget about. It is post-production. I've got a friend who has many cameras, even very advanced cameras, but his favorite one is the Lumex LX100 Mark II, which is a small compact camera with a small zoom, and it's micro four thirds, you cannot push your ISO really high, and in the, on the border and corner, it's not really sharp. Still, why is it his favorite camera? Basically, because he knows how to compose, he knows how to frame, all this. But then in post-production, he can get it to the same level or higher of any, any iron camera. Why? Because it gets sharp, nice back, it gets, uh, it recovers uh, yeah, dark areas, it recovers highlights, it recovers everything. And when you see the result, you will, you would never think that his camera cost him secondhand 400 euros. You think it's a, yeah, a lot more expensive camera. And it's important that people realize this. Obviously, you need to have a good computer. Because when you want to run uh, plugins like DxO or Topaz, you need to have some power. Because if it's just one picture, if it takes five minutes, that's okay. But if you're doing a wedding and you have 500 pictures to uh, correct, uh, it takes days. Okay, so it's important to have a fast computer. But still, uh, if you think about the software it's using, it costs about $100. And you get some results that are far higher than if you had spent a thousands or two thousand or three thousand euros more than the camera you have. So if you take into account that you have the uh, possibility of post-production, you can actually get push your limit, well, the limit of your camera so far that you will save thousands of euros. Yes, you need a decent computer, but the computer, maybe you already have it, or you can use it for other things also. It's not just photography, okay? But still, if you add the computer to the software, it's still a big difference with higher-end cameras. So don't forget this. In 2024, you cannot think photography, digital photography, without taking into account the possibility of a computer. So does this mean that you should not buy a high-end camera? Obviously, it doesn't mean this. Obviously, if you can afford a better camera, a high-end camera, you feel like it, you want to enjoy it, go for it. That's fine. That will give you more tranquility because uh, you know that um, double card, for example, you know, you will get uh, safe if there's any problem or better autofocus or a faster burst rate, all this. You're more sure to have a picture. So that's great. Why shouldn't you have that? Something else if you cannot afford it. But if you can afford it, why not? Uh, let's say uh, there is a race. I've got a really uh, great autofocus, really high burst rate. I go... I just have to pick one of the pictures I like most, and it's here. Obviously, if you start doing uh, that kind of pictures, you're more uh, a camera operator than actually a photographer. But that's another story. But still, you wanted a result, you get it, okay? So, yeah, why not get the best camera if you can afford it? Doesn't mean you need, you need it. No, but if you can afford it, why not? It's like a Stradivarius violin. If you give it to the best violinist, you will get something incredible. But you give it to me, yeah, you could give me a, an oil can with a stick and four string, and I will make the same noise. So not even music, I speak about noise. So obviously, with cameras, it's the same thing. Only the best photographer will actually get the best out of high-end cameras. It means that even if you get a really good camera, really high-end camera, you still need to learn. You still need to know how to make pictures. You still need to know techniques, know photography, know light, know everything. So it's not because uh, you can afford the best camera you, that you should feel that 
or you should think that with this you're okay you don't need to learn anything anymore the camera will do it no it will not okay so that's really important don't forget this although you can afford the best camera if you get it still learn photography still learn techniques okay another point when I spoke about professional, uh, you sell your work, you show your work. If people judge you by your gear, then you're not a good photographer. If I want to contract Annie Levovich, do I care about the camera she uses? I don't care. Or uh, Sebastian Salgado, do I care? I don't care. That's not my problem. I want the result they know how to make. So when you sell yourself, sell your work. Don't sell your gear. Show the picture you can make. The camera you use is irrelevant. Don't even try not to speak about it. If you have an entry level, try not to speak about, about it. Show the picture. If when they see your work, they ask you what gear you're using in the way that they want some kind of guarantee thanks to the gear, it's important to realize that you did not convince them with your pictures. So you need to better your technique, you need to better your pictures so people don't even care about the camera you use. They want this picture for themselves. They want to buy your work, to contract you, all this. They don't need to know what gear you're using. And that's really important. If people judge you by your gear, you are not a photographer that is good enough, basically. So, conclusion. Well, I would say uh, it's important to be humble and respect others. Uh, if people have more money than you or less money than you, it's not of your business. If you have a better or worse camera, it's not of our business. That simple. Respect. It's sad to read this, uh, that kind of comment that orgi originated this video, but there are many comments like this on so social networks, and that's really sad. Okay, I hope they will disappear soon, but I don't think it will, because uh, we see other uh, activities like, uh, yeah, sick, uh, sick, uh, we call that cyclists, bicycle, or, uh, or some sports all this and people are still always thinking more about gear than uh, uh, what they actually uh, uh, should which is uh, the activity and enjoying what they're doing okay so well that's sad so that's it thank you so much for watching the video if you feel it may interest other people please share it on social networks if you have not done it yet please subscribe to my youtube channel the small button on here and the small bell if you click on the bell you will get notified when i upload a new video my website arichibo.com if you have any question you can leave a comment below also leave you links of my own amazon links of everything I reviewed by kf concepts and more flashes by westcott more affiliated links and also a link to my paypal account in case you wanted to make a donation Thank you very much. Please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye.